most people only use 10% of their brain. <laughs> right, OK, so what's the other 90% for then? It certainly feels like that, isn't it? When you see the news and all the things that are happening because of utter stupidity of people. I don't really know what to say about that. It doesn't really... 10% on what level? Do they mean like a 10% corner over in one, one bit of it? Do they mean 10% of the nerve cells? I know it's a pervasive kind of myth. It's certainly a myth. Yeah, that's complete nonsense. Um, yeah, there's so many ways in which that's nonsense. I don't know the origin of this. I think I've read a book that's talked about it being pretty early origins that this came out. And I think it was more to do with advertising than to do with actual research. So many people believe it to be true. It's quite astonishing. I remember a few years ago, I was actually sat on a train listening to the people behind me talking about this very topic. And one of them said to the other that they'd um, seen something about brain imaging in the newspaper and it showed um, particular blobs in areas of the brain. And this really backed up their conclusion that only 10% of the brain um, was being used. And I very nearly turned around and um, challenged them on this, but thought that was probably not quite appropriate. I think the idea that, that 10 or 15% of the brain is active and the rest is dormant, uh, of course, is ridiculous. How do we know that's not true? Um... Oh, there's lots of reasons. Okay, okay one would be um, head injury and brain damage. So you don't need very much um, injury to the brain to have quite, potentially to have quite uh, catastrophic consequences. Um, so you know, if, if you're only using 10% of your brain, then the odds are if you had a head injury, you're, gonna, you're more likely to hit the 90% you're not using than the 10% you are. Of course, we don't know how much of the brain we use for any particular task at the moment. We can get some ideas now with functional neuroimaging about how much the brain is used for a particular task. And probably if I think at some of my data, rarely do I get more than 10% of the brain active for an experiment. It depends what I'm getting people to do. But if you, if you look around at an environment and look at some pictures and things like that, you might just about get 15 or 20 percent of the brain active um, compared to not looking at pictures. But of course the brain's always active, so that kind of comparison doesn't really answer the question of how much of the brain we ever use. But the idea that at any point in time we might use 10, 15 percent of our brain to do a particular targeted task, I don't think that's so unrealistic. It doesn't mean that the rest is asleep, it's just that it's not playing a critical role in that particular task. I think people like to think this idea is true because it suggests we've got this huge untapped potential that we could unlock, but it is just completely not true. There are a lot of these kind of things that are put around as scientific facts that really just, just continue in our culture and aren't really based on anything. And a lot of our brain is not so much about what we are consciously aware of, that might be very little, but just getting the body to function. There's quite a lot of interesting work going on actually um, looking now at what's many areas of the brain that people thought were largely quite uninteresting are actually doing whilst we're at rest and almost daydreaming. And there's a whole sort of body of research now actually looking at those areas that have been a bit neglected by, by other researchers. Uh, what else? Um, evolutionary pressure. Um, if you look at the evolution of the, of, the, of the human brain, then the sort of the frontal neocortex, if you, if you look at the way it's evolved, it's kind of grown forward and then um, sort of grown back over the rest of the brain. And it's folded, basically to try and cram in as much brain into the skull as possible. Um, and there's, there's always an evolutionary cost for any kind of growth. So the pressure wouldn't be to have like 90% of the brain not doing anything, it's just it's just not, it's just, just not true. I don't know where this myth came from, it's, not, it's just not true. Simply viewing the world, looking around you, activates all of your visual cortex, for example, and if there's sounds and smells, etc., then quite a lot of it is going to be activated. So that's, that's a load of rubbish, then? Yeah. I mean, m m maybe, maybe there's an argument that you, uh, you only... You only do 10% of what your brain is capable of doing or something like that, but you're using all of your brain.